Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. And today we're discussing the latest version of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Submariner Date in Yellow Gold. New for the 2021 model year in 41 millimeters, this is the Submariner Date 126618 Lunar. Net blue. A timepiece that features a fetching blue ceramic bezel insert, a sunburst metallic blue dial, and the boldest of golds and the most traditional and oldest of golds, yellow. So let's take a look at the watch. Dimensionally 41 millimeters, but it's not as big as that dimension change from the 40 would suggest. I've only been able to measure the largest dimension of this watch about 0.7 millimeters larger. So the watch measures to me about 40.7 millimeters in diameter. And from end link to end link, the distance across the wrist is 51.1 millimeters almost identical again to the old watch, 48.1 millimeters lug to lug, not including the end links, that is literally identical to the old watch, and 12.5 millimeters thick, which is identical to the old watch. The spacing between the lugs is now broader, it's 21 millimeters instead of 20. Uh, this watch wears just like the older one, but all in gold with solid end links, thick gauge clasp, and solid center links. You will find that the watch wears as heavy on the wrist as a platinum watch from any other brand, but I consider that to be a feature, not a bug, as it reminds you Rolex is not shorting you the gold. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, again, the fit's the same as the 40, no change. It has impressive wrist presence. I always thought since the arrival of the Super Case in 2008, the sub has looked more like a 42 millimeter watch, and that really hasn't changed with the 41. If anything, it's become a little bit more impressive, though not tangibly, as the distance down the barrel, you can see it's no closer to the edge of my wrist. The distance from end link to end link, not putting me in danger of overlap. I think you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. The bracelet, oyster style, three link, polished centers, satin shoulders, and polished outers, still very well made. It actually does a great job of venting. You can see on the underside there are calculated channels between the links to vent the wrist and avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. Removable links, as ever, on Rolex bracelets fixed by screws, not pin sleeves. Internally, you can see there's actually a little bit of sheathing left from the packaging inside the clasp, which uses a double locking system. There's a beacon to hook. You can see that lift lock system locks once, and then the clamshell again, and there's a little curve so you can dig your nail in to pop the clamshell open. Take a quick look. Glide lock is back. 20 millimeters of adjustment in two millimeter increments. So you can go all the way out, use it as a fold out over a dive suit, or you can use it for a more precise micro sizing and fine tuning of fit. You can also see there's a half link built in, and then we have these full size links a lot of adjustability, several different degrees of tailoring to find the right fit. It's still the super case. You can see the bevels are still long gone. The factory bevels disappeared back in the 2000s, but the super case is a substantial piece, sheer in profile, but no longer as blockish and squared off on the lugs. You can see the lugs are a little bit thinner because the end link of the bracelet has been expanded to thin them out a little bit from the inside. Screw down crown trip lock. As you can see, the big dot center, small flanking dots, that's how you know you're looking at gold trip lock crown. If we're platinum and trip lock, we'd have the big flanking dots and the tiny center dot. Now taking a quick look, crown guard profile, satin lug hoods, polished case flank, and then a very sharply knurled bezel that's satin on its inboard facets and then outboard polished. 300 meter diver, unidirectional dive bezel, 120 clicks, very smooth, but still sharply defined. It's a premium feeling and sounding 120 click bezel. Line it up with the minute hand. Now you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute count up timer. The insert is of Cerachrome ceramic, highly scratch resistant. The deposits of yellow gold give you the indices as well as the numerals. And the dial is a sunburst blue as it has been on the yellow gold model and the two-tone model since 2013. So that was when the lacquered blue was phased out on the yellow gold gold model and these two-tone in favor of a sunburst blue. So now you can see yellow gold hands and indices, the idea there being to avoid oxidation or tarnish over time. 18 karat will not oxidize. As you can see on all new Rolex models turned out since the 2018 model year, you have a little crown between Swiss and made, sign of the times. Underneath a solid gold case back, which I actually like because a gold case back gives you more precious metal than a sapphire, which costs about 30 francs. This is about an ounce of gold. Give me the gold case back. And underneath Rolex Caliber 3235, still 31 joules, automatic winding, bi-directional action, hacking seconds, quick set date, the watch which beats away at four hertz and 
remains a certified chronometer, now includes a rotor bearing rather than a jeweled staff to make the winding system more shock resistant. It still includes the setting mode so I can stop the seconds hand or rapidly set the date. The watch still includes a full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock tolerance and a niobium zirconium blue oxidized anti-magnetic hairspring Rolex calls Parachrome Blue. That hairspring is fashioned by hand into a Breguet overcoil, allowing the watch to keep consistent time an isochronous operation in any physical position. Of course, it's a certified chronometer, but Rolex takes the certified movement, cases it up, and then tests it as a fully assembled watch in six positions to run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day, which is what they call superlative chronometer, and that is far beyond the requirements of the COSC chronometer test. This watch also, of course, has the upgraded power reserve of 70 hours versus the previous 48, and Rolex's own shock protection system, Paraflex. Reach out to T-Mod also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.